Hello, beloved. It is Pastor Harden welcoming you to worship on this Sunday morning, October the 18th, 2020 with Mount Zion United Methodist Church. If you're visiting with us, we're so glad that you're here. And I'll share a few notes with everyone just to keep some things in mind. But before I do that, always remember to go to the website and check out the many things that are happening in the life of the church at mountzionumc.org. And while you're there, uh, take the opportunity, if you have not already, to subscribe to our weekly newsletter. It goes out every Wednesday with some timely information about the many things happening in the life of Mount Zion. But just remember, coming up this month, we are partnering, partnering with Must Ministries for a coat drive. There will be a one-day collection on October the 24th in the Mount Zion parking lot from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So you've got time to continue to gather up those coats as the days are getting colder that we might support our brothers and sisters in need in the community. And not only coats, but certainly with gloves, with hats, with scarves as well. So be on the lookout for further information about that, but remember the date, October 24th, for the coat drive. Also, although we recently wrapped up the formal food drive that we had in, in the drive through area with the blue bins there to bring by your donations for food, those blue bins will remain there for some time. We continue to have some donations uh, rolling in for food and we'll continue to, to distribute those with our community partners feeding those that are hungry. And so uh, feel free to drop those by. And as long as the donations continue to come in, those bins will remain out there for you to put those donations there. So uh, as we move on into this time of worship together, I call on Pastor Montana, if he would lead us in affirming our faith and in the presentation of our offerings before the Lord. This morning, as we join together on this beautiful Consecration Sunday, and we consider all the things that God has blessed us with and given to us, and how we might be moved to continue to give back to God and to God's community. I ask you this morning to join me in affirming our faith with one another as we perform the Apostles' Creed, one of the greatest traditions of our church, affirming the beliefs that we have with one another. If you have a United Methodist hymnal like I do, Maybe you have one just lying around the house like I do too. It's 881 in the hymnal. And I invite you now to join me in affirming our faith with one another. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This morning, as we join together celebrating Consecration Sunday, celebrating all that God has done for us and for this community and this congregation, this morning I ask you to consider taking a moment, taking some time for personal reflection on how you can continue to give back from the blessings and the abundance that God has given to you. And this morning, I invite you to not only think about it as a, on a personal level, but to turn to someone that's seated with you after the service this morning. Sit down with your family or your friends this afternoon or this week and talk about how God is working and moving and blessing you. And how might you be able to continue to give back to your community of faith from that abundance of God. I like to remind you that all of the wonderful ministries that happen here at Mount Zion, they are all, they all exist because of the giving and the love and the grace that you continue to pour out during this time. 
whether it's in-person ministry or virtual ministry. You are the reason that it happens and it couldn't happen without you. And we say thank you, Mount Zion. And we say that we continue to anticipate the beautiful, amazing, powerful ministries that we can do with one another as we move forward as a congregation together. I do want to remind you that there are several ways that you can give at this time. One of those is to go online to mountzionumc.org slash give and go through our Easy Tithe app where you can set up a reoccurring giving or you can electronically give just once if you want to. It's easy. It's simple. You just follow the links online and you'll be able to do it. Or if you want to continue to send in your giving through the mail through our United States Postal Service, you can mail those givings in to Mount Zion UMC at 1770 Johnson Ferry Road. And we will continue to collect them and process them just as if we were taking up a collection on Sunday morning in the sanctuary. This morning, I'd like you to pause and reflect. Talk with someone. Let them know how can you give and what you think you can do. Continue to bless this community of faith. Good morning. As we gather for corporate prayer, there are many desiring prayer this morning. Those in our various spaces, those that are listed in the online bulletin, I invite you to call out any names that God has placed on your heart. Jesus said, my house shall be a house of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we enter your presence embracing the joy 
of being together as a community of faith. By your spirit, turn our fears to courage and our confusion to confidence and boldness. As we approach your throne of grace and mercy, we offer prayers for the transformation of the church and the world. May we be transformed by the grace of Jesus Christ. You remind us that he is your beloved son with whom you are well pleased. Open our hearts to hear his words and to follow his example of servanthood. Calm our troubled minds and grieving hearts and restore us with your forgiveness and love. Heal our brokenness, sickness, and disease. Thank you for your healing touch. As we consider the upcoming election, we pray for your divine will and purpose to prevail. On this Consecration Sunday, let our stewardship glorify you. Lord, you have entrusted us with the fullness of all that you have given and empowered us with the presence of your Holy Spirit. Grant to us joy in our giving and trust in your promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare to hear the message this morning, the scripture is found in the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. But they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed and they left him and went away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Beloved, I have no doubt you have received plenty of communication over the last several weeks regarding our stewardship program, which culminates today, Consecration Sunday. And it's, of course, not my intention to wear us out with it this morning, but it is my call this day to help us step through the gate that it has been opened for us to make our stewardship commitments. Now, if you happen to be visiting with us, well, we're glad you've joined us. And in one way, you might say that you're in uh, great luck today because you get to observe a little bit of spiritual housekeeping, you might say, in the life of a local church. But in reality, this is a lesson for all of us who claim the name of Christ, who claim to be his followers. Recently, I, I heard a story about a man who grew up in a little country church, and it's really not terribly far from where Mount Zion is located, but it began meeting near the turn of the century. And when I say that, I actually mean the 19th century. Uh, it's a very old church, and for most of its 200 plus years, 
really not a whole lot different happened there in either the community or in the life of the church. I mean, that life just kind of pretty much went on the same way year after year. But then somewhere along and as the 1970s began to, to turn into the 80s, change began to happen and it began to happen really fast with interstates being developed and urban sprawl starting to, to come through the area and what's uh, often referred to as the Sun Belt migration took hold as people began to move into the southern states. And what once had been pretty much a rural area, you know, farm, farmland all about the church was now beginning to be covered with upscale subdivisions and strip malls and shopping centers. And of course, the church changed too. But that not being without a struggle, but of course, eventually the church moved on into the 21st century. But one Monday morning, uh, the pastor was visited in his office by a man whose family had been thought of as being one of the charter families or charter members of the church way back when. And uh, he had grown up there as a child and as a youth and, and then went away to college to get his education and then pursue his career in business. And uh, a few years back uh, before that visit, uh, he had actually sold off what had been at one time the family farm, all of that rural property to a developer. But no one had heard from him since. But then he came back for his 40th high school class reunion. And uh, that's what brought him to the church uh, that Monday because he had attended worship on Sunday morning and he wasn't happy. He complained about all of the changes that had taken place in the church. And he made it known that these changes were somehow an affront, somehow an assault, an insult to him and, and all of his ancestors, all of the people who had been part of that church for all those years. And he ended this diatribe with, with words uh, to this effect. Preacher, if God was here today, he would be shocked, yes, shocked, at the changes in this church. If God was here today, wonder what he would say. Well, we know what Jesus said in our scripture reading this morning. Render unto, unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God that which is God's. And so I guess if God were not here today, if we didn't serve a living God, then we wouldn't really have to render much, would we? But therein lies the real question of this reading. And I say that because I have certainly heard plenty of this particular text being dragged around, using as a launching pad, as a, as a proof text, you might uh, say, for discussions about politics, about taxes, about separation of church and state, but those are not the core concern of this Bible story. The lesson is about not letting the cares and the obligations of this world divert us from our calling to serve God's purposes with what God has provided. About not living as though God were not living. Though continuing somehow or another to confess faith with our lips. Well, in this scene this morning from our reading, we have a group of people who have spent a great deal of time worrying about things like politics and taxes and separation of temple and empire and who thought uh, of such fretting and all of that worrying and all of that arguing as somehow or another fulfilling their religious duty to God. But of course, we know how the preaching of John the Baptist and then, of course, Jesus of Nazareth had upset all of the political, the, the religious, the social dances that were going on, which were really all about keeping those on top on top and those underneath, well, underneath. Those on top were resolved to protect their position and, and status quo by, by tricking Jesus into saying something that would offend somebody either the Roman rulers or, or maybe the piety of the people. The question Jesus is asked about the lawfulness of paying taxes to Caesar is a trick question. Because if Jesus says no, well, he may be seen as 
fomenting rebellion. And if he says yes, he offends the common people who hate paying taxes, especially to an emperor who claims to be divine. But of course, as usual, Jesus is too smart for them. And he uses that coin and its graven images as an object lesson. As he says, render unto Caesar. Well, so far, so good with that. But then Jesus comes across with the real point, the deeper point here. As he says, render unto God that which is God. Beloved, the call of our scripture lesson today is to not forget God in the midst of our busyness and our chaotic and confusing lifestyles. It's a, it especially calls us away from what is in essence a kind of practical agnosticism we can drift into if we're not careful, in which we good and well confess faith with our lips, but we fail to live in response to it. Now, beloved, unlike the, the man in the story uh, at the beginning of this message, the one I told about the man who returned to his home church who acted like a, 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 as if there, there was no living God or at least just kind of the, the nostalgia of God, he was actually blind to the evidence. He could not understand the evidence of the living God right before his eyes. A faith that was continuing to be alive and grow among and through the people. The blessings that made all that happen all down through those years and was continuing to happen right there before his eyes, even on that Sunday morning where he somehow or another got offended because someone was praising God and, and worshiping and doing things in ways that, that he, he didn't do. All of that continued to happen. Because the blessings for it came from God. And the people were faithful to use those things of God for the purposes of the ministry that the Lord had entrusted to them. And therein is the big lesson. What God calls us to do. And He certainly does call us to do it. Remember our mission statement for the church to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. God calls us to do it and God provides the means to do it. But those means come through our lives. Now maybe... For some at Mount Zion, that story that I told had a ring of familiarity to it. You know of how this church unfolded on down through the years. I know that there are plenty listening to this message even unto this day who remember just up the road from where I'm standing in this sanctuary about a mile and a half where that church used to stand before the congregation moved down here. So many fine souls down through the years returning to God the things that God provided, which is called an act of faith, which in turn provides spiritual growth. And that not just being for the individual, surely it does, but through them, the community in which they serve becomes changed and different and people grow in their faith. Beloved, the same call is before us today. An opportunity to respond in faith. An opportunity to continue on in this legacy and, and mission in spiritual growth that is now entrusted in our hands. Now in a moment, I will make the specific call for us to respond in participation with our stewardship program to make our commitments for 2021. But before we rush to do that, I believe it's most appropriate that we would take a moment to settle ourselves, to center ourselves, to take a moment of prayer and to consider what it really means in our lives to return to God what is His. Let us pray. Oh God, our living, loving, ever-present creator and giver of all good gifts, bless this community of faith that we call Mount Zion. I pray that you would strengthen our faith and grant us 
the spirit of Christian stewardship so that we may give generously of the gifts that you continue to pour out abundantly in our lives to help build your kingdom right here in this corner of East Cobb. But not only here, but throughout this world. We ask this in the, the Holy Spirit, the name of the Holy Spirit with the assistance of the Lord Jesus who lives and reigns with you. One God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, beloved, the, the call to us in this stewardship program has been to consider what God is calling us to give. All of the communication that has gone out has been consistent in that message. What is it that we will do to, with our commitments of what God has provided to realize the ministry that he has called us to? Now, during this time in uh, our worship services over the last few years during Consecration Sunday, as we have been here in this sanctuary, the ushers have come through and they have handed out the, the giving cards like this one and, and we filled them out. And, and as we, after we did that and we were ready, we would go and, and place them there in a basket on the chancel steps. And there we would conclude the service and go on into a time of fellowship for lunch together. Well, of course, we know things are different this year. But earlier this week, you were mailed a letter with instructions for how to make our financial commitments for 2021. That same information is in the electronic newsletter that went out on Wednesday. And it contains the link that you can click on where we will all go and able to make our commitments online in the same way of, of filling out a card. Now, some may prefer to fill out and send in a hard copy card like this one. Well, one was included in the letter with a return envelope. If you didn't happen to get one or if you need a card, you may be new or, or you're just becoming part of the congregation, you can request a card or you can go online to the link. But if you need a card, you can contact the church office and let us know, or you can send an email to communications at mountzionumc.org. Now, many have already completed their estimate of giving, even before we got to this point as the information went out during the week. And so if you have not done so already, a great time to complete yours would be right after the, the conclusion of this service. While you're still online or, or wherever it is convenient, whenever, as we hope to have all of these commitments turned in this week. But may we consider our response with one of God's gifts that we use to glorify His name as we hear this gift of music from our talented musicians themselves, a gift of God right here at Mount Zion. Beloved, as we conclude our service for today, 
It may be Sunday for many, it may be another day during the week. That's the beauty of having these services online is being able to watch them whenever you would like. And of course, always too, being able to go back and to refer to a service as you remember something you'd like to retrace and think about a little bit more. But I pray that as we leave, that we would be good stewards of all that the Lord has provided every day and all things and, and everywhere. Let us be those good and faithful servants the Lord has called us to be. Go now in the mighty and the precious name of Jesus. Amen.